श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महंत स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय एज वी कंटिन्यू द स्टडी ऑफ प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज इज जीवन चरित्र एंड एज वी कंटिन्यू टू ट्रैवल विद प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज फ्रॉम the year now we're going to the next sessions we will be looking at pages 204 to 253 which is from 1955 to 1960 so if you think about it this is the when pramukh sai maharaj was about 34 years old till he was 39 so these are the four or five years that we will be covering in the next uh, few sessions as we left off in the previous sessions we know that we were traveling with pramukh sai maharaj and we know that his um, travels had intensified. Pramukh Sai Maharaj, while he was traveling, and at that time, obviously, under the guidance of uh, Yogiji Maharaj, Yogiji Maharaj had made lots of efforts to establish the Yuvak Mandar and the youth activities of the Sansta, and to further encourage and development all the youths. Uh, they had organized, Swami Sri, under Yogiji Maharaj's uh, guidance, the first Yuvak Adivation, a youth convention, had been organized in Atladra. So this was the first time that the Sansta had, uh, had uh, done an adivation or youth, youth convention in Atladra. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was there to inaugurate the adivation, which was going to take place in Atladra. And because of Pramukh Sai Maharaj's arrival, it gave a lot of motivation, a lot of encouragement to all the youths who were there as well. After the adivation, Swami stayed there for the adivation, but after the adivation was over, during his travels in the region of Kanam, Swami Sri, there was one incident where Swami Sri had traveled by boat with Yogi Ji Maharaj from Sinhor to Panetha. And, you know, during this four hour journey, there was a nice uh, moment, memories with Bapa, where Yogi Ji Maharaj was there as well. And Yogi Ji Maharaj had performed the Aarti, the Stuti, gave prasad to everybody. A lot of people who were there remember this from that time as well. And then during this Vijran, Swami Sri also visited. Uh, Kabir word for Darshan. So this is something noteworthy as well. And he also visited other villages, Kantharia, lots of other villages en route. And we can see that Pramukh Sai Maharaj is vichran again, very, very intense. Let's move on to page 204. <coughs> now, after Swami Sri's vichran in Kanam, Yogiji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj came to Sarangpur. They were there for, to celebrate the Fuldol festivals, and this was Fuldol festival, which was to be celebrated on the 9th of March in 1955. Now, during that time, Krishna Kumarsi, the Maharaja of Bhavnagar, his son was going to get married, and as a result of that, there was a special train reception had been arranged uh, for this occasion in Botad. And as a result of this, the Maharaja, Krishna Kumarsi, he had sent a telegram to Yogiji Maharaj in which he had requested Yogi Ji Maharaj to please come to the Bota Junction station so that he could bless the prince. And Yogi Ji Maharaj accepted the Maharaj's, Maharaja's request. And on the 10th of March, 1955, which was the day after Fuldol, Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sahib Maharaj, they went to Bota station with a, with, with a group of other santos as well to, to bless the prince. And this way, you know, they attended to the request of Krishna Kumarsi. When they were at the station, after obviously <coughs> the train had left, at the station there was a simple worker over there who had, who had met Yogi Ji Maharaj. And he requested Yogi Bapa for a Padramni to his house, you know, to make, for Yogi Ji Maharaj to make a house visit to his place. But it was getting late and Mota Swami, who was there as well, so he was a little agitated. And um, immediately before even anybody could say anything, he jumped in and he said, look, it's very late, it's already 12.30. And Yogi Ji Maharaj still has, you know, to take his afternoon meal. We still need to get to Sarangpur. And so, I don't think the Padram is possible. But then obviously, Yogi Ji Maharaj, he had a very compassionate heart. He was very, very loving. And immediately he understood, you know, that the, 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 the work, his request and his welcoming nature and his love for Yogi Ji Maharaj. So immediately he accepted the request and he proceeded to visit the hut. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was also with him. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj accompanied him. So this is another thing we noticed, that Pramukh Sai Maharaj was very, very flexible. It didn't phase him, whether it was getting late or not. Whatever Yogi Ji Maharaj wished, 
it was Pramukh Sai Maharaj's wish as well. And so we saw that uh, very nice incident in there as well. While Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Sarampur, and then from there on he carried on his travels. Now we're going to move in, we're moving on to page 204, which is E3. There was a very nice incident over here as well, where it, it as, as we look into Pramukh Sai Maharaj's travels, Pramukh Sai Maharaj had come to Atladra. And during this time, the work for the, the dome for Atladra Mandir was ongoing as well. And as a result of that, you know, the Sansta needed funds. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj, with a group of uh, Hari Bhaktos and Santos, would travel in the Kanam area. His Vicharan was primarily focused on this because there was a lot of funds that were needed for the, for the, mandir, for the mandir as well, for the, for the dome. And so Pramukh Sai Maharaj's main obviously travel at that time was collecting the funds as well. After visiting villages of Goriad, Sejakua, Vagodia, Bhayapura, Antoli, Jambusar, Kelod, then eventually Swami Sri came to Amdavad. Now we can see a list of all, all these villages and cities that Pramukh Sai Maharaj would travel. A lot of this we have achieved, we have received because it was written in Pramukh Sai Maharaj's diary. Pramukh Sai Maharaj used to keep a diary in which a lot of these details were written. Uh, which villages they traveled, what dates they were there, what they did. And as a result of that, today we have a very historical uh, account of all the Swami Shri's travels. Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually came to Amdavad and he was there with Puja Yogi Bapa as well. And on the 31st of May, two sadhus from the Narnaran Dev Mandir, which is also in Amdavad, had come for Yogi Bapa's darshan. And at that time, they, you know, they, they, they requested to sing a few bhajans as well. And while they sang, Yogi Bapa was very happy with the bhajans that they sang. At that time, Yogi Bapa's uh, attendant sadhu, he requested Yogi Bapa to have some warm milk. He brought some milk with him, ukaro. And he, ukaro thorok swami mate lehevata. And as soon as that happened, Yogi Ji Maharaj then instructed Pramukh Sai Maharaj to make arrangements so that these two sadhus could also have Ukaro. Now, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was the president of the Sansta. He could have easily pointed it out to somebody else. Yet, obviously, because it was Yogi Bapa's Agna, immediately, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, the sevak he was, immediately got up and arranged for both of them to take milk and snacks uh, with Yogi Bapa. And we could see that even though he was the president of the Sansta, yet Swami Sri was, he treated everything, you know, as a seva. And even if it was a trivial seva, he treated it, treated it as Yogi Bapa's Agna. Let's move on to page 205, E4. Now this was 1955. It was going to be a very historic year for the Swamin and Sampraday because it was the first time that sadhus from the Sampraday were going to travel abroad for Satsang Prasar. And keeping in mind that the Chaitri Punam festival that year was celebrated earlier because of this, normally the Chaitri Punam would be celebrated on Chaitra Sud Punam. But on this occasion, it was celebrated on Chaitra Sud 12, Chaitra Sud Baras. And this festival is normally taken, normally, for many, many years, it took place in Bochasan. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj traveled with Yogi Bapa from Amdavad to Bochasan for this event. Now, as a result of Yogi Bapa having to travel abroad, lots of other travels were supposed to happen. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj accompanied Yogi Bapa to all the other villages as well. And every village or every town that they went to, there were special ceremonies to bid him farewell that were being arranged. All the way from Amdavad, all the way through till Mumbai. And for these special programs, now what had happened was they had organized the same program in every single sabha, in every single center that they went to. Pramukh Sai Maharaj took the responsibility of implementing all these programs and he looked after all the arrangements. Now, traveling with Yogi Bapa, at the same time they had to make sure that uh, they balanced everything because so many Hari Bhaktas, so many devotees would flock to Yogi Ji Maharaj just to have this final darshan. And Yogi Bapa, many Hari Bhaktas have experienced it, that Yogi Maharaj would lovingly pat everybody on the back. Dabbo Yogi Bapa Apta. And just to take this final Dabbo from Yogi Ji Maharaj, people would flock because they knew that he's traveling abroad. And so as a result of the crowds, Pramukh Sai Maharaj had to manage both the crowds to make sure that the Hari Bhaktas were also happy. And at the same time, he had to make sure that Yogi Bapa's health was also looked after. Because otherwise, trying to balance both could be very tricky. Yogi Bapa was extremely pleased with the way Swami Sri managed all this. He kept Yogi Ji Maharaj's uh, schedule intact. And he also managed to keep the Hari Bhaktas happy, which is exactly what Yogi Ji Maharaj would always want. Eventually, they got to Mumbai. On the 13th of April, Yogi Ji Maharaj reached Mumbai airport. 
and from there swami sri pramukh sai maharaj accompanied yogi bapa to bid him farewell to nairobi so the flight was from nairobi to mumbai so this was the first international trip trip in 1955 yogi ji maharaj went uh, to africa and pramukh sai maharaj stayed back let's move on to e5 page 205 Now the fact that Yogi Ji Maharaj had left to travel abroad it meant that a lot more responsibility fell on Pramukh Sai Maharaj's shoulders. Now let's take a note of this that Pramukh Sai Maharaj was only 34 years old at that time. But despite all this they had to do the he had to balance everything. He had to balance all the satsang activities along with all the other sansar related activities which includes the constructions of the mandirs uh, and all those other things that had to ha- uh, that that were taking place parallel. And to cope with this Swami Shri made sure that he increased his vicharan. That means his travels had also increased. Now it's worth uh, noteworthy to take note that the fact that at that time the sansta owned no vehicles. We didn't have any cars in the sansta at that time. So all transportation were Pramukh Sai Maharaj had to rely on trains and the ST buses. We we we, we discussed this in the previous sessions as well. but we can think about the the times at that time yet pramukh sai maharaj had to increase increase and intensify his travels as well so this is just another thing that uh, is worth noting and just to take an example of how swami shri's vicharan was very very intense very very hectic after giving vidai to yogi ji maharaj pramukh sai maharaj left mumbai on the 14th of april 1955 and from there he traveled by train to atladra they got to atladra on the 15th of april so the next day after reaching atladra immediately pramukh sai maharaj heard and he got the news that shri ji swarup swami had passed away shri ji swarup swami was a was a sadhu who was there during shastri ji maharaj's time as well but after hearing this and shri ji shri ji swarup swami was at that time in bochasan so from atladra pramukh sai maharaj went to bochasan they finished the final rites and all the vidhi over there after completing the final rites On the 23rd of April Pramukh Sai Maharaj left and came to Anand. On the 24th he was in Anand. From there Pramukh Sai Maharaj traveled to Atladra on the 26th of April we can see it on the on the screen. From there he traveled to Bochasan on the 27th of April from there to Ahmedabad and then to Sarangpur to Gadda and then eventually to Gondal. Now again, again this vicharan was very very intense and as a result Pramukh Sai Maharaj fell ill he had a bit of a fever but despite this he carried on traveling and eventually from Gondal Swami Shri came to Ahmedabad so this is just a sample of how intense Pramukh Sai Maharaj's vicharan was during those times let's move on to E6 which is to page 206 Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually when they came to Ahmedabad they celebrated Yogi Bapa's uh, birthday celebrations Yogi Jayanti was celebrated in Ahmedabad on the 19th of May in 1955 From there Pramukh Sai Maharaj went again to Atladra we know that a lot of construction work was also taking place in Atladra but his reason for coming to Atladra was different this time there was a 7 day shram shibir that had taken place a shram shibir for all the yuvaks all the youth and the purpose of this shibir was primarily to encourage and inspire all the youth to engage in seva and motivate them along these lines many youths from different mandirs had gathered to perform different sevas in the mandir they had come from all the way from mumbai shaurashtra charotar amdavad all these hari bhaktas had gathered gathered over there now as to to initiate the shram, uh, the the shram shibir eventually initially they had planned a, a huge welcome event to welcome pramukh sai maharaj in a grand way with a procession from the station all the way to atladra mandir but the heat it was so intense at that time so eventually they they decided to cancel all those plans and eventually just the welcome samaya or the welcome uh, festivities were all celebrated at the mandir in the complex in the evening by everybody at that time the sham yagna or the sham shibir it began on the 23rd of may 23rd of may 1955 at 6:30 a.m. not the time 6:30 a.m. that's when it was launched things have changed a lot in today's era where the timings have become a little bit later but back then 6:30 a.m. that's when the shibir was launched it started off with dhun and dhyan in the courtyard again it was very very hot but luckily by god's will at that time bhagwan nichathi and maharaj nichase it suddenly started to get much much more cooler a few raindrops also fell uh, were fe- uh, fell and it cooled the whole atmosphere at that time let's move on to e7 
which is page 207. After the initial dhun and prathna, it was Pramukh Sai Maharaj who was going to address the, the, the Shram Shibir. But when we listen to Pramukh Sai Maharaj's words, they are filled with lots of love and reverence for all the youth that were there. And we take a few glimpses of the speech that Swami Sri did at that time. And in the address, in the speech, Pramukh Sai Maharaj said that as well as benefiting physically, one will ben benefit mentally from the Shibir as well. As well as, as well as develop spiritually as well. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj is saying that this is a whole collaboration of all this. Physical development, mental development and spiritual development. And through these discourses, Swami carried on saying that. And then he also talked about the character of the youth. He praised the character of the youth. Ketamibu Charitra Vancho. Your lives are very, very inspiring. The fact that they all performed seva very, very silently. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj said something very um, encouraging. That seeing such youths makes us feel very, very proud. Again, very, very inspiring. This was very noteworthy of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Wherever he went, whenever he spoke, it was full of inspiration, very, very motivating. He very, very uplifting as well. Then Swami also noted that one feels as if the youths to whom Anadi Mur Akshar Gunatyanand Swami had taught Brahmvidya have returned. What a powerful statement. Gunatyanand Swami na vakat maje yuvo ko hata, e atyare hajar she. And upon seeing these youths, I am very, very overjoyed. Even our Guru Yogiji Maharaj, who is divinely present here, is giving us darshan and blessing us, uh, giving us his blessings whilst he's still in Africa. Today, I am announcing the inauguration of this Shibir, and I feel extremely fortunate to have received the opportunity to do this. Again, lots of love, lots of respect, lots of appreciation we can see in Pramukh Sai Maharaj's words. And this is how he molded the youth. We move on to E8. Now during this uh, Shram Shibir, as soon as the inauguration was over, immediately they were all set to work. Shram Shibir, they all had to get engaged in some sort of seva. At that time, the, the foundations for the steps in Atladra Mandir were to be, ex ex um, at that time they were taking place at that time. Uh, it was all being excavated at that time. Now Swami Sri immediately also, he too joined in the seva as well. He did the pujan of the murtis. And then he started off the seva by digging the ground with a pickaxe in his hand. The, again, this was very, very encouraging. And we know one thing about Pramukh Sai Maharaj. He always led by example. And we can see a very nice image over here. This is probably an image of a later day. But again, it, it, we can just imagine Pramukh Sai Maharaj uh, you know, digging with a pickaxe to start excavating the land for the foundations as well. And this was one of the reasons why everybody was so enthusiastic working with Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Everybody else then eventually joined in the digging of the foundations. They filled the muds and the, uh, filling it with mud and, and containers. Along with this, while Swami was a leader, he was always a sevak as well. And this is something we noticed. He took a lot of care of all the youth that traveled with him. And one interesting thing was that he would only eat after everybody else has eaten. Bijana Jamani Nej Pramukh Sai Maharaj Avidite Jamta. Let's move on to E9 which is page 209. Now during the Shibir, along with the ideals of Seva, Swami Shri also inspired the youth with wisdom and knowledge. This is through his Kathavarta, lots of Gnan. And one morning, during one of the morning discourses, all the youths at the Shram Shibir had gathered and Swami Shri then explained to them that the Satpurush helps one to differentiate between Atma and Anatma. Atma and Anatma, Anat non-Atma, non-Atma meaning the body. This is one important thing. So Swami is again explaining to them the importance of the Satpurush. Therefore, one must conquer the mind. This can only be accomplished when one has surrendered one's mind to the Satpurush. Surrendering one's mind to the Satpurush. The Vishayas are like an ocean of poison and it is difficult to come out of this ocean. They can only be conquered when one takes refuge at the feet of God at the feet of the Guru. Now again, Pramukh Sai Maharaj is stressing the importance of a Guru. Only when you, uh, and when can the mind be conquered? When one takes refuge at the feet of a Guru. The true Guru, the true Guru qualities of a, the true, the true qualities of a Guru are described in the Vachtamrath and, uh, and other scriptures. By offering one's mind to such a Guru, all of one's deeds will become auspicious. So, by offering one's mind to a guru, all of one's deeds will become 
auspicious. And taking these words of Swamish into consideration, all the youths can then continue to carry on with their seva. Let's move on to E10. Now, during the closing ceremony of the Shibir, Swamishi spoke about, one, he spoke about following Agna, that it is important to follow the Satpurushi's Agna. Two, he spoke about good behavior and righteousness and how everybody should live according to the Shikshapatri. Three, Swami talked about removing the pride of one's caste. Then he said that it is important to have no hatred towards any devotee, having no hatred towards anybody else. Pramukh Swami Maharaj always used to say, Mane kyare koi no ahit thai, evo kyare vichar avyonathi. Then Swami stressed on the importance of understanding the Upasana and that moksha can only be attained through the Satpurush who, through the Satpurush, through whom Shriji Maharaj is forever present. Eventually he expressed his uh, satisfaction that he was very, very happy with everybody. And then finally Swami ended by asking forgiveness in case there were any inconveniences because all the yuvaks had come there for seva. It was a lot of hard work, a seven day shram, sh shram shibir. But eventually, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then asked for forgiveness. Again, which was very notable of Pramukh Sahib Maharaj. This was his humility. He never found it difficult to ask for forgiveness from anybody, even from the youths at that time. And everybody was very, very touched by the concluding words of Swami Sri at that time. Eventually, once all this was over, then Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then started his vichran again. He went to Vagodia, Antoli, and all these other villages, all the way to Purshatampura, Ishwarpura. Eventually, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then came to Amdavad. Now we know that the construction of the mandirs in Atladra and Garda was still taking place at this, at this time. And in order to facilitate that and add more workmanship to the domes in the mandir, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then decided to arrange a visit to Abu. Because there were a lot of mandirs and masterpieces over there which were worth uh, looking at and learning from. So we can see that Pramukh Sai Maharaj went specifically organized a visit to Abu to visit all these places. He departed by train from Amdavad on this. 16th of June and eventually arrived at Abu Station. From there, they traveled for a 17-mile journey all the way by in a bus to get to Mount Abu. In Abu, Pramukh Sai Maharaj stayed at the Raghunathji Mandir where the Mahant affectionately arranged for Swami Sri's accommodation and food and everything. On the, on the morning of the 17th of June, 1955, after taking a bath in the Nakhi Lake, again, many of us might have been to, many of you might have been to Abu and you might have witnessed the Nakhi Lake. Prasadini Tadao Kevag because Pramukh Sai Maharaj also took a bath in this lake. Eventually Swami Nasta Pani Kariya and then Swami went to see the Ramkund and the Hathi Gufa because he wanted to note he wanted to see the carvings in all the natural stone in those caves as well. Many sannyasis used to also live in that uh, in those caves. After lunch, then they went to the to see the shrines of Delwada. Now these are very famous, uh, this is a very famous mandir. But Pramukh Sai Maharaj made sure that they took those visits, uh, visited those mandirs, the shrines of Delwada, the ancient uh, Ranchodji Mandir, the Sun Sarovar, and the Murti of Alam Rasari, uh, Rasiya before returning to his residence at 8 p.m. Pramukh Sai Maharaj had taken a lot of interest in all the mandirs. We know from our experiences all the mandirs that Swami Sri had constructed. And we can see that he had learned and taken a lot of, even the mandir in London Mandir, we noticed a lot of architecture. Swami Sri had a lot of input in all these architectures, but we can see that Swami had visited all these other mandirs and other places. Normally when we would go to travel to these places, we would just look at it, appreciate it and walk away. For Pramukh Sai Maharaj, it was a learning experience. Every time he vis visited these places, he came back with him, something new that he learned over there. On the 18th of June, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was accompanied by a guide. They visited the Gaumukh. Gaumukh and the Vashishta Ashram. No vehicles could go there. Many people who've traveled there would know that you have to travel by foot. You have to walk all the way down 700 steps down to reach to Gaumukh and then 700 steps back up again. Eventually, Swami Sri managed to do that. On the 19th of June, Swami Sri then traveled to Achalgad, which was about five miles away. And the journey again involved taking an ST bus in which 20 other people had to be seated in that time as well. So by bus they went there. Then Swami Sri arrived at a bus station in the morning. It was around 11 a.m. before they could actually get there. And when they reached Achilgarh, Swami Sri then viewed again the mandir again. On top of the mandir was a Jain shrine in which there were caves of Bhartuhari and Harishchandra. So Swami looked at all this stuff. Eventually they got, it was around 
2 p.m. It was too difficult to get back to the residence at that time. So then what they did was they took some raw food stuff from Achaleshwar Mahadev Mandir. And then Pramukh Sai Maharaj himself, you know, they found a nice place over there under a tree. And under that, Swamishi prepared the khichdi. And then that's how they had, a, like an, they had a little outdoor picnic at that time. Even the afternoon rest, it was all out in the open as well. So this was another uh, thing not, that was worth noting as well. On the final day of the trip, there was a solar eclipse. So after getting ready in the morning, Swami Shi went to the Hanuman Ghat. He went onto Naki Lake. There, you know, during the solar eclipse, they did bhajan bhakti. Once the eclipse was over, Swami took a bath again in the river, had some khichdi, and then they left for the mandir. And at 2 a.m., 2 p.m., 2:30 p.m., they finally got to the station. They left for the station, and they got to the station at by 4 p.m. From here, Swami took the train to Amdavad Station, from where he sat and then joined the Shaurashtra Janta to get to Atladra. So Swami got to Atladra around 12 midnight at that time. Let's move on to E12, which is page 211. Now during the month of Shravan, 1955, Swami Sri and Sant Vallav Swami did a lot of vichran in the villages surrounding Sarampur. From 4th of September to 6th of September, then Swami then stayed in a village called Jamrada. Jamrada there was a nice, there was a, there's a very nice incident over here. There was a small, there was a young boy by the name of Harji who used to live in Jamrada. And every time Pramukh Sai Maharaj would meet him, Swami Shri would say, Harji, tari marji suche. Harji, what is your marji? A very nice way of interacting. Pramukh Sai Maharaj had a very uh, interesting knack in which he would be able to connect with people at the first minute and would leave people with an everlasting memory of this. Harji, throughout his life, remembered that Pramukh Sai Maharaj, every time he would meet me, he would say, Harji, tari marji suche. A very nice incident from the life of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. From Jam Jamrada, Swami Shri then went to Rohishada. Swami stayed uh, for about a week in Rohishada. There was a paran over there on the fourth chapter of Satsangi Jivan. Again, again, Swami had traveled through these villages so many times and he knew all these Hari Bhaktos. Almost 50 years later, when Pramukh Sai Maharaj was here in London, I think that was in 2004, when Pramukh Sai Maharaj remembered his travels uh, in Rohishada, and he would speak a lot, very highly of the Hari Bhaktos in Rohishada. And Swami would say that everyone in Rohishada had great Shraddha, had a lot of faith. Popat Bhai, Keshu Bhai, Tribhuvan Soni. Now remember, 50 years later, Swami Sri is remembering all these names. They all used to perform discourses five times a day. Back in the day, all these mandis used to have five times katha. And normally in the Swaminan mandis, we would hear that katha would take place five times a day. And then Swami goes on to say that they would sing the cheshta, including the Oda Pads, Ajimare, Orede Re. And in the year 1955, I visited these villages. They would all arrive early in the morning after completing their morning routine and participate in discourses. No one would care about breakfast. For them, listening to discourses was their breakfast. And after lunch, and an occasional afternoon rest, the discourses would commence again. After the Sandhya Aarti, there would be more discourses, and then the Cheshta would be sung. That would take us to midnight. All these devotees were strong in their niyams and ahnik. Swami always gave a compliment where it was deserved. And this is a testimony of that. Thus, even the devotees who performed Seva Bhakti in the life of small villages forever remained in Swami Shri's heart. Let's move on to E13. Now, during the course of this vichran, Swami Sri had traveled from Rohishada to Chakampar in the pouring rain and the muddy roads at that time. And he visited, there was an incident where Swami had visited a small devotee as well. The devotee was an ordinary devotee. The circumstances in which he lived were also very, very ordinary. The reason for visiting was just a simple, just to keep the Hari Bhakta happy. Again, very ordinary. And the seva that received, normally in a Padramani, people would give some sort of a, a contribution. Even that was very ordinary. But for Pramukh Sai Maharaj, no Hari Bhakta was ordinary. Everybody was Sashtra Ji Maharaj and Yogi Ji Maharaj's Hari Bhaktas. And he would go to great lengths just to keep each Hari Bhakta happy because every devotee mattered to Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And therefore, without thinking, whatever was coming back, uh, without any difficulty, without considering the difficulties, he always made sure that he would keep the Hari Bhaktas happy. From Chakampar, Pramukh Sai Maharaj proceeded to visit Amdavad for a Parayan. And during this journey, very interesting again, how Swami's travels were at that time. From Chakampar to Amdavad, it was a very uh, tricky journey. From Chakampar, he first reached Barwada in a cart. From Barwada, 
He traveled to Bhimnath by car, and then finally from Bhimnath to Amdavad by train, all the way on the Somnath Mail. Again, to sing that difficulty in traveling, yet it never perturbed him or stopped him from his, uh, his travels. Let's move on to E14. This is a very uh, well-known prasang. Pramukh Sai Maharaj from Amdavad, he came to Sarampur to celebrate Jaljini festival, which was on Ekadashi on the 27th of September, 1955. Swami Sri and Sant Vallabh Swami, they did all the katha, they delivered the discourses. And after that, there was a Nagar Yatra, a procession, which took place in the village of Sarampur as well. Thakurji was taken on a boat, and devotees from all over Gujarat had come to witness this uh, auspicious occasion. Now, after breaking their fast the following, following day, now think about it, it's Nirjada Ekadasi, a waterless fast, on the day of Ekadashi. On the next day is when people break their fast. Many of the Hari Bhaktas who had come there had actually departed and the sadhus who were there just finishing off all the, all the, the wind up for the seva and then after lunch, normally people would take a bit of a rest. Even Pramukh Sai Maharaj took a little bit of a rest that afternoon, the following day after Ekadashi. Now what had happened was Pramukh Sai Maharaj was asleep and suddenly and next to him would be his, the, the attendant sadhu Dharma Jeevan Swami who normally prepared the bedding and everything. Halfway through the sleep, Dharma Jeevan Swami woke up and he noticed that the bedding was empty. So he was a little worried, where is Pramukh Sai Maharaj gone? So he got up to see and as he went further, he noticed that Pramukh Sai Maharaj was busy engaged in doing some particular seva. What was he doing? He had a broom in one hand and a bucket filled with water in another. He was busy cleaning the toilets that were used by the devotees. The president of BAPS was busy cleaning the toilets that were used by uh, by the visitors, by all the Hari Bhaktas that had come at that day. And upon seeing such humility and the seva that was performed by the president of BAPS, immediately the seva also ran over there, ran over there to help Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And he said, Pramukh, he asked Pramukh Sai Maharaj to stop everything. But Pramukh Sai Maharaj then said, look, you're here, two are better than one. Let's get together and let's, let's, let's team up and finish this off. And eventually, Pramukh Sai Maharaj carried on cleaning the dirty toilets and he told the Sevak Sant to go and get the water. As soon as the Sevak Sant reached, to get the water was no, no easy task because you had to go down 30 steps into the pond to collect the water and then come back up again. It's only then that the Sevak realized how difficult this Seva had been. Pramukh Sai Maharaj hadn't called anybody. It was him alone doing this Seva. Again, a very inspiring incident from the life of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. We will end the session today and continue uh, in the next session afterwards. Swaminarayan Bhagwanani. Jay.